The Viennese Society of Volunteer Rescue used a horse-drawn wooden carriage known as a Wiener Ambulance, in which patients were transported in layers. Despite the partially open sides of the carriage, curtains were used to preserve the patient's privacy. Around 1914, at Cochin Hospital in Paris, in the radiology department of Dr. Maxime Menard, a chest X-ray was performed. Unfortunately, Menard ended up losing a finger due to the side effects resulting from prolonged exposure to the X-ray machine during the operation. In the United States, more precisely in the American nation, it is possible to observe Dr. Elizabeth Broin seated in the back of a horse-drawn ambulance. During the month of July 1939, with the aim of minimizing pain during childbirth, a patient chooses to inhale analgesia while a nurse performs a routine examination. Around 1900, a hospital train housed a mobile medical clinic designed to provide medical care to patients in need during transportation. In the city of Berlin, located in Germany, in 1939, it was possible to witness the procedure of oxygen administration being performed on a newborn. During the period between 1850 and 1900, Dr. Louis Albert Sayer observed the alteration in the curvature of a patient's spine during scoliosis treatment. Before being encased in a plaster cast, the patient self-suspended while being observed by the physician. Around 1938, one could see a patient lying in an artificial breathing machine known as an iron lung. In the 1930s, more precisely around 1938, it is possible to witness nurses performing a surgical technique using a respirator jacket. This jacket has a function similar to that of an iron lung. Around 1929, it is possible to see a woman using an electric inhalation device that has the ability to generate a medicinal mist for the treatment of colds and flu. At Princess Beatrice Hospital, one can find Gerald Blackburn, a young patient receiving medical care and treatment inside an oxygen tent. This device is used to deliver concentrated and controlled oxygen. Inside a German hospital, it is possible to find patients undergoing inhalation of powdered medications such as menthol and eucalyptus, with the purpose of treating respiratory diseases. The René Dubois anesthesia machine was a device used to administer anesthesia during surgical procedures. This device consisted of a complex system that allowed for the controlled dosage of anesthetic gases and oxygen. During the influenza epidemic that emerged after World War I, it was common to see women wearing facial masks as a protective measure against the disease. These devices were used to prevent the transmission of the disease through the respiratory tract and reduce the chances of contagion. While the doctor checks the blood pressure, Lt. Ratke uses a mercury column to apply constant pressure to the lungs. This technique is employed to assess the individual's cardiovascular response. In the United States, around 1928, a new hip massage machine was introduced. This device was designed with the aim of promoting muscle relaxation and improving blood circulation. A man can be seen enjoying the benefits provided by a sunray lamp. This technology, which utilizes artificial light to replicate the effects of the sun, has the potential to be used in the treatment of medical conditions. The Postal Department conducted a test of the stretching device in collaboration with Dr. L. F. Kebler. The device promised to increase height within a range of 2 to 6 inches. This technology employed a controlled traction system to stretch the spine and lower limbs. In the Red Cross building in Cincinnati, Ohio, women can be seen operating the latest stretching machine for surgical dressings. This technology was created with the aim of facilitating the process of stretching and securing dressings in hard-to-reach areas of the body. With the purpose of improving blood circulation, one can observe a young woman undergoing four sessions of water baths with electric current applied to her arms and legs. This technique is known as a galvanic bath. In the city of Frankfurt, Germany, an advanced Röntgen X-ray machine was developed, designed to prevent injuries to the attending physician during radiological examinations. This innovation allowed the doctor to visualize radiographic images without being exposed to ionizing radiation. In the dissection room of Jefferson Medical College, located in Philadelphia, around 1902, one could see tables with partially dissected cadavers. This room was dedicated to the study of human anatomy by medical students and researchers. 
During the plague epidemic, doctors used masks with beaks that contained perfume substances. These masks, popularly known as bird beak masks or plague doctor masks, were used to protect doctors from inhaling the disease. During a plague outbreak in Manchuria, it is common to see a doctor wearing protective clothing to prevent contamination. These garments, often made with durable and impermeable fabrics, were developed to safeguard the wearer against pathogens and toxic substances. Before the introduction of polio vaccination, it was common for children infected with the virus to spend months living in iron lungs, although not all of them survived. A photograph taken around 1890 to 1900 depicts a woman with a prosthetic leg. This prosthetic represented a mechanical alternative to the lost limb and was often made with materials such as wood or metal. In 1925, at the Chicago Orphan Asylum, babies were subjected to tanning sessions as a measure to combat rickets, a common condition during the winter. Rickets is a disease caused by a deficiency of vitamin D, which is produced when the skin is exposed to sunlight. The image displays some of the objects used in early plastic surgery to camouflage facial injuries. During that time, plastic surgery techniques were limited, so it was common for patients with facial deformities to rely on prosthetics as an alternative. The image portrays a radiology nurse during World War I in France in 1918. During the conflict, radiology emerged as an essential tool in the diagnosis and treatment of war injuries. The image portrays a neurological examination being conducted with an electrical device around 1884. During this time, electricity was being widely studied and used to deepen the understanding of the human nervous system. The image portrays one of the early surgical procedures that utilized ether as an anesthetic, around 1855 to 1860. The use of ether as an anesthetic was considered one of the greatest discoveries in the history of medicine, enabling patients to undergo surgeries without feeling pain or extreme discomfort. Leonid Ragazov, the sole surgeon on an Antarctic expedition, gained prominence by performing a self-appendectomy in 1961 after developing appendicitis. In extremely challenging conditions, with the assistance of two colleagues, Ragazov conducted the surgery using a mirror as a visualization tool and anesthetized himself with a local anesthetic. This story exemplifies his skill, courage, and determination in the face of an urgent and isolated medical situation. We have reached the end of this content. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like to support us in creating more interesting content like this. We appreciate your ongoing support.